What's good, everybody? This episode of the podcast is sponsored by DistroKid. They are the go-to for digital music distribution and the easiest way for musicians to get your music onto Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, TikTok, YouTube, and more. They offer unlimited uploads, and artists keep 100% of their earnings in stores 10 to 20 times faster than any other distributor. Fastest payouts. They help out with automatic splits, cover song clearance, and all kinds of other amazing tools and templates to help you get the most visibility for your releases. I dig this company and appreciate their business model that offers more features than any other distributor at the most affordable price possible for solo musicians, bands, DJs, studio artists, and any other creators that are producing music in their home, and they also offer label services as well. They've got three different tiers to offer creators that start as low as $22.99 a year. That's just $1.92 a month, and even their top tier is just $7.50 per month. And the best part about DistroKid sponsoring the podcast is that they are offering Dan Cable Presents listeners and viewers 30% off your first year membership with DistroKid, making their already affordable prices even cheaper for you. Check out the link in the episode notes. I will also put it in my Instagram bio in the link tree. That link will give you 30% off that first year of service. Super stoked to have DistroKid sponsoring the podcast and cannot thank them enough for their longtime support of this thing. This episode of the podcast is also sponsored by Puff Coffee. Puff is one of my favorite coffee shops in Portland, Oregon. They've got a location off 28th and Stark in Southeast. Their coffee is delicious and everyone that works there is always super friendly. I had the pleasure of staying in their neighborhood for a month or so and it was just a real treat to have this as my neighborhood coffee shop for a bit. And now I find myself going out of my way to get over there and get some coffee. Puff Coffee was started by the founder of Stumptown Coffee, and they are making small batch coffee roasted daily here in Portland. Their mission to find, roast, and deliver the most delicious coffees anywhere. Their small batch process means that they get to keep things interesting with experimental blends and single origin gems while always keeping the classics on deck. They've got a variety of beans to choose from, and if you're not in the Portland area, you can order their small batch coffee straight to your home through their website, and you can use the coupon code DANCABLE, all one word, for 20% off a coffee subscription. Links for Puff Coffee will be in the episode notes. Big thanks to Puff for supporting the show and for their amazing small batch coffee. Now let's get into the episode. What is happening, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Dan Cable Presents Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the program once again. If this is your first time listening, thanks for checking out the show. You can find fresh episodes coming at you every Tuesday. And if you want to help support this thing in a free way, you can do so by clicking subscribe on iTunes, clicking write a review, giving the podcast five stars if you feel like it is deserving of so. And that will help propel this thing into the tops of those iTunes charts, which will give it more visibility on the national and international levels, helping strangers find the podcast and just a great way to contribute to the growth and sustainability of this thing. Appreciate the hell out of all the folks that have already taken the time to do so. If you're not listening on Apple, just hit like, follow, subscribe, wherever you are listening from. Give it five stars on Spotify. If you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe there. And uh, check out the monthly playlist that I have been dropping every first of the month. Those are pretty spread out genre-wise. Links for those are in the episode notes. Just a snapshot on what I'm listening to throughout the month. Hope everybody is doing well out there. Stoked to get in to episode 409 of the podcast with Portland born and raised rapper milk is on the show this week uh i've been following this dude since uh 2021 when he put out this tiger's milk project with uh producer calvin valentine who is a uh a former guest of the podcast if you want to go back and and check out an old one but uh i just love uh milk's records everything he's uh he's put out in the last few years has just been been so good and and just so impressed by his output and uh just 
really enjoyed our hang. This is the the first time that we've uh, really gotten to uh, talk with one another. We had uh, met in passing at some shows, but uh, have never really had the time to chat. So uh, really appreciated this conversation and and getting to dive into his mind and and just kind of... uh, his creative process and and where he's coming from. If you're new to Milk and you dig the music, you've got a lot to catch up on. This dude has, uh, he's put out like six or seven records, I think, since 2021, which is absolutely crazy. And uh, especially for, uh, it's not really just about the quantity. I think it's really about the quality here is, uh, is also a part of the thing that that makes it so impressive so i'll put all the links in the episode notes so you can keep up with milk he will be out on tour this summer so check in with those dates if you want to see the fish that saved portland live in a city near you and with that we are going to get into this thing and we are going to play one of my favorite tracks from milk and it is uh from the record i just referenced uh the fish that saved portland you can check this thing out wherever you stream music and uh this is a record that milk did with televangel and we we get into uh kind of that relationship in this conversation as well and this one is called plus sized model Let's do the damn thing. Used to practice my toy tag on a pizza box. I look like Ethan Hawk and beef and brocks. I'm a grown man, dog. You can keep the crocs. You can keep the beats. I'd rather beat the block. I'm up top. I can see the motor from Nana Roof. They call me propaganda proof. I am the truth. If we broke, we got to gamble loot. Tell our pockets chunky like Campbell's soup. Hold on. Let me adjust my nozzle. Fly by my gut wide. Plus size model. That Jada Kiss clip. Please don't touch my bottle. Two day bender. Call me Bug Eye Blanco. Look like the white beetle juice from Howard Stern. Switch from flower to powder when the hours turn. Laughing like when will these cowards learn? Inside job. Bush watching the towers burn. First the fat boys break up. And every day I wake up. Someone got a problem with milk. I catch them on the way of what they cry about who's on the bill. First the fat boys break up and every day I wake up someone got a problem with milk. All right, Milk. You ready to do it? I'm ready. All right, man. I'm excited to to have you here. I've been following your music for a while now. I guess since you put out that, that Tiger's Milk project with Calvin Valentine is when you uh, first really got on my radar. And I understand that's uh, right around the time that you started putting music out heavy after maybe taking a little break yeah yeah got busy during the the pandemic yep um but yeah been listening to your music a lot and just uh just love your your style and delivery and your your lyrics and just really impressed with your your output i guess over these these last few years you just Uh seem like you uh put out a new project every other day <laughs> but uh yeah man talk to me about uh, just your what are your early memories of of music like either maybe like falling in love with it as a listener or like as a participant in a as a creative yeah uh yeah i think like i'm i'm old now so like i was listening <laughs> i was uh Like, I probably really got into music, like, watching, like, music videos, you know? Like, fuck, like, MTV, BT, and shit like that. Absolutely. And we can, we're okay to. You can let it fly. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I gotta stop, actually. When I listen back on other podcasts, I sound like an idiot. (laughs) But anyway, yeah. uh, Yeah, like, what, just, and uh, I think I was always. I have two older brothers, and they were into all types of music, especially into rap. Okay. And uh, so rap was just always, like, the thing in my house that was playing. Like, everybody was listening to rap, and like that was just the genre, really, that I grew up in. What were, like, the the records that were maybe, like, circulating around that time that Uh, really stuck in your brain? uh, (laughs) Like, the first thing I remember was my brother playing see i'm old but my, my, you're uh, not gonna my, outdate me though <laughs> i promise you i probably playing, have a couple uh, years it was uh it was written by nas okay uh like jay-z volume uh hard uh 
Hard Knock Life, Jay Z Volume Two. Uh, a lot of Wu Tang was playing. A lot of Bay Area like E Forty, and like Spice One, and and like the uh, Be Legit, the Click, like a bunch of Bay stuff, but okay. also a lot of East Coast stuff. Especially my my older brother Thomas loves East Coast, like loved East Coast rap, like Ray Rayquan and and Ghost and all that. So like yeah, and then of course like I liked Will Smith when I was <laughs> I liked the uh, uh, what was that album uh, with Big uh, Willie Style? Big Willie Style, yeah, yeah, that yeah, was cracking. And my, I yeah. was my brothers hated it, but I was blasted just the two of us. Bro, that would that shit would play at like my junior high dances. <laughs> yeah, there you go, nice <laughs> Miami, <laughs> <laughs> getting jiggy with it. The Wild Wild West, uh, yeah, oh, Wild Wild West is big too. Damn, Will Smith used to be so cool. Had some bangers. He used to be so cool. He's so uncool now, but. uh um, it was pretty wide then, though. Like, uh, even if it was like very rap centric, it was it was coming from like all aspects, from like maybe the stuff that was happening pop wise yeah. on the radio to like East Coast stuff and yeah. maybe some underground stuff as well. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so those are like my earliest like memories. I I really didn't really listen to any other genre of music till I got to be like twenty one, twenty two. Really? I was just kind of strictly a hip hop. I mean, I liked other stuff, but I didn't like. I didn't. I had like a deep, like nerd out for rap. You know, yeah. since since a very early age, um, I used to go to like lyric websites at the library at school to like print out the lyrics to like rappers i liked and like look at it you know what i mean like just a geek for it yeah yeah and that was like early age too but uh so i started writing rhymes and rapping when i was like 11 so that would have been like in the year 2002 so okay <laughs> so i've been rapping like yeah for a long time was it uh do you think it was just because that was like the music that was around you or like why do you think you you gravitated towards rap music and and writing lyrics from an early age? Um uh, I think yeah because it was it was always around me. I was a big I was also a big hooper when I was little and then into high school but like like basketball and rap at the time especially just went so hand in hand. Yeah. And, like, being at the park, the older homies would come, like, park their cars and, like, blast rap music while we would hoop out of their cars. And, and then, like, uh, yeah, it was just, I think it was because it was around me. The, old, the, the older I get, the more I realize I like it is because I don't really see myself as much of a, of a musician, really. I always kind of, like, see myself as, like, a writer. Okay. Like, I don't think I'm, I'm actually not very musical. I don't really... <laughs> <laughs> know anything about music really like you know as far as like chord progressions and stuff like yeah. that and anything like that that's cool i've been doing a music podcast for uh nearly a decade now and i also <laughs> don't know any any yeah. music theory or anything i just know i like music a lot yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so like i always i always uh realize i think i just really like the writing aspect it's my favorite part of everything i do is just sitting down and like writing rhymes it's like the funnest part of it to me you know do you feel like you are always because you came to like writing through rap music do you feel like you are always kind of like your lens for life is through bars almost like and yeah and for that sure. you're always thinking about how this uh this observ observation you have can work into a bar yeah it messes up my life but yeah for <laughs> sure like like yeah like any weird detail i see or th like yeah it's like uh, yeah i see it yeah it's like <laughs> it's like neo at the end of the matrix when he starts seeing the the code in real life that's like me at bars right there <laughs> well, what do you think you like about that and like processing the world in that way i don't know it just i just really like this shit like i really like finding a weird thing to rhyme i really like i really like just saying the illest shit i could say <laughs> i just like i just i just like it like it's just like 
it's like one of the only things that comes like easy to me you know what i mean like it's like it's just like you kind of just pick it out of thin air and it's just it just it just I, yeah it's just like it's the only thing that's like it's like so natural and in me that it's like even if I was like, there's like a five year period of time where I really wasn't doing music, like recording or putting it out or anything. But even during that time, it was still just like rhymes all day in my head. <laughs> like, like, you, like know you would I mean? still be writing things down yeah, periodically. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And even, yeah, like even if I don't try to write, I'm writing, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah, yeah. So it's not like a... Uh... It's not necessarily like some practice around it, like where you're like, I sit down and I write every day. It's just like, it's just in you and flowing through you. Yeah. It's just like kind of something you have to do. Almost. Yeah, kind of. And, I, and, you know, a lot of people think like, I, like I got homie, like other homies that make music and shit. And they be asking like, like, do I write every day? Or, it's like, no, nah, I don't even write, like technically sit down and write every day. But it's just like, it's always in my brain. And then so like, you know, sometimes you'll have a session where, like, a couple other, like, you know, you're with the homies and you're making a song. I'm writing a verse in, like, five minutes. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, it's, like, because it's already been processed in my head. You know what I mean? Like, it's already there. It's always already there. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's it's really the only, it's, like, the one thing that just comes supernatural to me. I don't, Yeah. So it's not necessarily that you're even like you're writing this thing in five minutes. It's like been permeating yeah. like inside of you and and processing, even if it's like almost subconsciously, yeah, it's, it's like, just always kind of happening. It's, it's always happening. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's and I just, you know, being able to write. It's just the reason I think the reason why it took people to start taking notice of me is because. I think I just had to live a little more life, you know, like when I was little, younger and rapping, it's just like what I didn't have maybe all the life experiences and things I needed. And then like when I got, when I finally came back to this thing, I had lived a lot of life. So it's like, you know, I think that that's part of it. It's like my writing just reflects my life and what I see and what I'm doing and what I'm hearing so much that I just needed all this extra stuff, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's easier when you have a little bit more of that, like, life experience. Yeah, and you feel can like just maybe draw you, on more stuff. Yeah, you, like, develop a voice in, like, having something to to actually say. Exactly. And, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to turn this on the airplane. Oh, you're but. good, dude. <laughs> uh, it's not It's not that serious. <laughs> <laughs> We're not on a late night show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, 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 and I and yeah, like, and I just love, I like if I didn't rap, I would write in some other capacity. I'm sure, like, I yeah. don't know what, in what way or or what, but that's that's why I always say I see myself more as like a writer than a musician. Have you explored that much, like outside of writing bars? Like, are you ever uh, just r doing some sort of creative writing or like just? Yeah, a little stream of consciousness type things. Uh, I've had like a couple poems published, but like that was because like of weird circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part, like I haven't really. Tr I want to, like I really want to. I really would like to write like some short stories, like kind of like based on stuff, but you know, but like based on my life, but fictional lies and aspects but uh i haven't i haven't really got to it yet because i've just been trying to do this so hard lately but i will later in life probably want to do that yeah my my dad's a writer okay my dad worked for the was a uh worked for the oregonian for like 30 years as a as a journalist okay and an art critic so like the times that you have written like poems do you feel like that is a completely different mindset than when you're writing writing raps i think writing the poems is easier for me because i don't have to rhyme if i don't want to yeah <laughs> um but honestly i've gotten to my rap to a place where it's like 
it is similar to like what I was writing my poetry kind of <laughs> like somehow some way where it's just my poems really weird and off the wall like and like hyper specific and referential yeah but that's kind of and like funny but that's I've I've kind of got my raps to that place too so, absolutely yeah. so it's like I would be like taken from the same well. Like I couldn't write a poem and write ra- like you know what I mean. I'd be drawing from the same well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas like if I think if I made a short story, or I don't want to say reviewed, but like talked about a movie I really liked, I don't think that would be digging from the same well as much. You know what I'm saying? Right. A little more analytical. Yeah. Opposed exactly. To just these like random observations and. The yeah. little details that kind of stick with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I love the just your your range of like pop culture references throughout the the records is very strong. You know, yeah. just well, the, neutral milk motel in itself. Yeah, that was that was pretty. That one I got a kick out of people. I once read a Reddit review of a guy being like. I went to the Neutral Milk Motel release party. I thought it would be a cover band. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. He was like, it was still fun, though. <laughs> that, that means you're doing something right yeah, with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just uh, have those. Are those like things that just as much as the raps that like kind of come to you like pretty quickly or like yeah. stick with you when you're thinking about like maybe an album title or something like the Neutral Milk Hotel on that, that play? Yeah, like like thinking of the names and titles of albums and like how they look in my head is like a huge part of it. Like if it like makes, if it like makes me like laugh or gig, like, it's just like, it's just like, yeah, that's such a big part of like what I do or just like weird shit. Like the fish that saved Portland, like that's a flip on a horrible seventies basketball movie with Julius Irving. <laughs> Like, I just like doing weird, yeah. And, like, a lot of people have no idea, you know what I mean? They're like, what the hell, dude? Why did you name it this? Warning. An epidemic of fish fever is sweeping the nation. It is highly contagious. Fortunately, there is no cure. Yes, the fish that saved Pittsburgh. It's the fish that saved Pittsburgh. Yes, the fish. Fish. They're all Pisces. Pisces. And I just like the like like I'm really now I'm really into like naming shit like ska bands. Like I wanted like I want to make like a track like an album and track titles next like like how a ska band would but like for my own but like <laughs> yeah yeah like I love that part of it like and the way it looks when it's written down and like just all that yeah I'm very into. It's all part of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It all goes through the same. Yeah. Is it like important for you to have that prior to even really digging into the project? Or does it usually come like as you get a few tracks in? Um, it can happen either or. A lot of the time I have it very, pretty early in the process. But yeah, like uh, The Fish That Saved Portland. I think we had the whole album done and then I just decided to name it that because kind of the album felt kind of psychedelic and i thought that was kind of like a psychedelic name but like yeah like a lot of the time i have the name before i even get into that i have the name and what the the cover is gonna look like and even track titles before i even start writing you know yeah track titles are yeah just as important as as sparking things for you then yeah 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 and is there like a as far as like a vision for a complete record, like what is uh, what is that process like for you? Like, are you just kind of curating beats with whatever producer you are working with that like seem to make sense for the both of you, or does it kind of come differently with each project? Uh, well, yeah, I always usually work try to work with just one producer per project. Yeah. Just because all the rap I've liked has been pretty close to that. Or like maybe one or two producers on one thing. But but also I just feel like it's the only way to get a real real vibe. I don't have the resources to get like five different producers in a room and get them all on the same page of what I'm thinking and doing. Yeah. And But like if it's just me and one other person and it's just easy, like you guys start to understand 
in real time what's happening more and yeah like with the beats it's just um again i'm not very i'm not like the pickiest beat person because i'm so my mind is so into the writing and everything else that like i kind of just pick beats that i know will work with what i'm thinking you know what i mean so it's like but a lot of the time a lot it's easy to make that fit that's not yeah. a that's not an issue really so like um yeah and like when you work with just one other person with just one producer they they're invested in it you know what i mean like you're invested in it whether if i if i got like a bunch of beats from like eight guys yeah. or eight people on one project they're going to be like i have one beat on there it's like whatever yeah it's like, almost like this compilation that yeah. they're a part of and I and I don't and it's like I'm really big in like cohesiveness like, and I think for an album to has a much better chance of being cohesive if it's just one producer you know what I mean as opposed to like choosing from whatever a ton of different beats yeah uh, but I'm <laughs> it's funny we say that because right now I'm working on something that is gonna have multiple producers <laughs> <laughs> so you know but. Got to. I guess I'm just trying to switch it up on this one. Hey, <laughs> we get to see what that side of milk yeah. is like too. Yeah, yeah. Do you also like that um, that style of maybe working with one producer because you feel like you can really dig into the project like together? Yeah. As a team too. Yeah, I think I I realize like I'm very you know motherfuckers get on podcasts and be like I'm such an introvert. I sit at home and I read <laughs> philosophy, but like I'm an I'm I'm not an introvert. I'm I'm extrovert. Like I'm out. I'm like a person that's of outside. Like I, like I'm in the mix and I've been in the mix a long time. But like it's like I'm not. I like teaming up. I like collaboration. I like feeling like. Where, you know, I think it maybe comes from hooping too and playing sports. It's just like, I like that aspect of it. Like, we're a team, you know what I mean? Like, and like, let's try to, you know, get the W. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, I love how uh, people that like play sports or played sports growing up and like also maybe make music now, I feel like they often maybe have that, that same mindset and it yeah. like really translates over into that. Like, something about team sports and participating in something like uh i know you've uh performed at a at a portland pine cones uh yeah <laughs> fest of last year <laughs> actually i don't know if you remember but that was the first time i actually met you i was djing that night and i and i played your tracks oh yeah night. yeah 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 oh, oh yeah alex also yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. i remember that yeah but, but even like some goofy thing like that of like playing on this beer league team every week is like it has brought that back in me of just like knowing that like, Oh, I really do like fiend for this, like this teamwork shit, even yeah. if it's not like a serious league. No, I know I do too. I definitely do too. And I think like a lot of artists maybe like weren't like maybe like big athletes, you know, back in the day cause they were doing their art shit. But yeah. I have noticed that too. when people that are, people that have played sports to do music kind of succeed at music at a higher rate <laughs> <laughs> because I think they understand like delegation also. Like they understand like, Oh, I need this person to do this. Yeah. So I got to be good to this person. Yeah. And I, you know what I mean? I have to be shitty like that. But like, like that's just something I've noticed. Yeah. They've got that, that competitive edge in them a little bit too. Yeah, like exactly. Wanting yeah. Wanting to yeah. top the thing. Yeah. Which yeah. I feel like within rap, is like important uh, to bigger, kind of like have, thing, yeah. have that as part of the persona and For like sure, wanting yeah. to be the best and you know it's always talking like you are the best and no it's a big part of it big trope <laughs> so like when you were uh i don't know let's say like high school like i know you had this gap of when you weren't playing music yeah or writing music but like what uh when did you like start rapping in front of people or like yeah, I probably played my first show when I was like sixteen. Okay. Up at <laughs> up at Ethos, uh, uh, State of Mind, R.I.P. Misk. Uh, they had this group, State of Mind, and uh, Harry Mack, who's like a freestyle savant now yeah. guy. He was in that group too. Really? Yeah. And okay. uh, they put me on. They put me and my my homie Brill Devin on a show 
we were st- we were load B then load B, and uh, that was like a group I was in with him for like high school into like my early twenties, and then we kind of I kind of stopped because I just hated certain aspects of stuff. But but uh, yeah, high school we played tons of shows right out of high school, playing tons of like house parties and shows around town and in Eugene and stuff like that in Seattle, but. Yeah, it was a fun time. When I look back on it, I don't know how good the music was at yeah. <laughs> uh, at all the times, but it was fun, you know? Like, I had a lot of fun on stage. I miss kind of having... Because, you know, when you're making music at that age, it's like everybody's around you kind of like, like, you know, cheering you Hyping on you at up. every little yeah. step of the way, yeah. you know what I mean? Like... You write a rhyme, make a song. The next day, you're with 25 of your homies playing them the song, and they're all hyped. <laughs> like, I'm not around everybody like that anymore because yeah. I'm older, but I miss that kind of aspect of it. But also, yeah. But, yeah, I played a ton of shows. Like, in high, like from, like, 16 to, like, 24, I was doing a lot of shows around town. And, yeah. Did it always feel pretty comfortable from a performance aspect for you? Like, was there any nerves around that at all or were you always like pretty confident in jumping up on stage and and rapping man i think i i I never get real i never i mean i get a little nervous but i never have had like real like like uh issues with that no like performance anxiety yeah like i like and i think that comes from basketball like i Whatever you can figure it you out. You can but search I, the and one <laughs> videos, you know, of young milk out there on the court. With yeah, some like legends. I've, I've always had like been able to play in front of big crowds. Yeah, it's never really been an issue for me. I mean, I'm a fucking, I'm a ham, you know. Like <laughs> it is what it is. Like I just, you know, I probably like it more. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But I, you know, you get nervous. But I just, I don't know. It never it. it you know, you sip a little something or smoke a little something or do whatever you got to do and, and you're ready. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. So now never really got too much like anxiety stage fright or nothing. I know you said you like enjoyed the writing from a pretty young age, but like, how do you feel like you like maybe developed yourself as a rapper? Like, were you just always like along with the writing were you always practicing in some way like whether you were freestyling with friends or just like rapping over beats that you found on the internet or things like that yeah yeah i mean yeah i always yeah i was always like in cyphers freestyling or you know when i for a while we i was battling a lot of people uh um and I, that was when I was young too. I was like fifteen, going around the city battling people. <laughs> uh, I yeah, like I yeah, I've always you know, again like I don't know how good it was at the time, but at the time I was super confident about it. <laughs> so like yeah, I never really had much of a yeah. It always, I think with shows, it's like I like rapping like i like getting on stage and rapping it's just there's so many like other things that bum me out sometimes about the shows (laughs) yeah yeah whether it's the venue the sound the how the people are treating me like it's i never care about how many people are in the crowd because i've had fun shows where there's been like 25 people yeah and i've had shows i've hated that had like 250 people so it's like never that is not the like issue or like or like how small or big or prestigious the venue is or whatever like that like that's never been the thing and then you know also i fuck up shit on my own all the time so it's like like it it could be something that i'm like damn i wasn't on it that night or like that freestyle wasn't good that was weird or like so it's just like it's those type of things it's but now i'm like now when I do shows, I just, I'm just at a place now where like everything just kind of has to make sense for me to want to do the show. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Because, well, because there's so much about those shows that aren't about the performance, right? Ex- yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. It's all of the little details and like, like you're saying, like you never know how you're going to get 
treated by the venue person yeah. or like the staff or like yeah. if you know you put all this energy into promoting the show and then the sound is bad yeah. or like something along those lines as in like when me and Braille, me and dev when we were when we were younger and loved be like we did get treated bad a lot by venues and like uh staff and like you know issues with stuff like that maybe some of that was our fault i don't know but <laughs> it seemed like i don't know like it'd be like ridiculous i remember this i mean it doesn't matter but it's just like i take i think i take some of that with me now it, like but when, since i've been back i've been treated pretty well so <laughs> i i just take some of that stuff from the past i think with me now that i don't need to but yeah when, I will say this: When you have a good show and it's a good show, there's no better feeling. Yeah, there, there's no, there's not like writing nothing, recording. When it's like a really good show and the crowd is into it, and it, you know things line up, it's there's not a better, there's not a higher high than that. Do you think it's also like the aspect of like anything can kind of happen in the live show, and that like you're probably not going to like pin yourself to exactly what's on the record and you might do like say some shit that you'd never said before that like really hits exactly yeah well that's the thing about me i hate like if i like i've never been on like a real deal official like 28 date tour or anything like that but i would have to change the setup almost every night in some way if i were to do that just because like i don't want it to ever feel like animatronic like i don't want it to ever feel like we're just going through the motions like it's too rehearsed yeah it's too rehearsed and i think with rap music well maybe i mean maybe maybe other but i only can come from it through rap music is that like there needs to be a certain off the cuffness about it i think even in the recording like when i record i really don't do more than two three one two three takes like i it just because you're your first take is when you're going to like feel it the most. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like and and for me like when I'm in the studio like I got to be having fun. The engineers got to be having fun. <laughs> like which is usually the produ- like yeah. who I'm making the song with. So it's like I don't want them to feel like we're working. Like you no, know what I no mean? No one's having fun at take So it's 20. like like and I usually have the verses pretty down, you know. Yeah. So it's not like that hard to like get it like in the first couple of takes and when when you're doing that and shit's moving and all of a sudden it's three hours later and you have six joints done everybody feels pretty good you know you drink a beer and you're like listen back you're like oh damn you know that's what i want it to be like i don't i don't like this idea of like going over doing like a hundred takes i think it takes a lot of the magic out of what's happening in my opinion yeah that's how i like to record now i know there's people that absolutely (laughs) would hate me saying that but that's how I like to do it. <laughs> I'm actually always surprised by the people that can do it the opposite way of what you're talking about and like maintain some of that like authentic energy. Cause yeah. like there's obviously people like you're saying people that, that work like that, but it's, uh, it's fools it's, that are in love with hearing themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's always surprising to me that you can, uh, I don't know how you recreate that energy of that that first take or or that second take maybe. Yeah, and I think just like I want I want I want everybody in the room like feeling that feeling it. You know what I mean? Like I'm performing kind of then right there a little bit. Like it's like I want it. You know, like you're gonna laugh at the lines the first take you're not gonna laugh at the lines anymore at the 13th take right (laughs) right (laughs) you know what i mean like i love when i'm recording and i see televangel like laugh while you know what i mean like well you know all that's helping me be better you know all that's helping the the song so it's like it makes it yeah yeah I, i i like the idea though of you doing the 13th take and that producer um just like they're laughing just slowly fading <laughs> and the energy yeah that's what i i wouldn't even do that i would be like if i couldn't get the verse out by then i'd be like this is not something is wrong here. this is over yeah it's over <laughs> honestly i probably would because like also with rap i really like i've recorded in like big really nice studios and i've recorded in home setups nine times out of ten the home setup the take is gonna be better 
It's like the demo shit. You ever heard a demo and loved a demo, and then they recut it at a, like a bigger studio, and you're like, yeah. damn. I thought the demo was yeah, better. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> like, like I think with rap, I think because rap is so, you know, we don't got to mic up a drum set. We don't got to, you know what I mean? There's yeah. not, like, it's a beat. It's plug and play that a lot you of the load time. in. Yeah. I think if you can make it as small as possible, for, for, for what I do, for my type of rap, yeah. the smaller it is, the better the outcome. The, the, le- the more we can take away, like you know what i mean mm-hmm. like the better it'll be the more it'll feel more like hand woven rather than handmade rather than like whatever you know i think that's why i love uh my favorite mf doom record is doomsday and it's because that thing feels like he just stitched that together that day recording it you know what i mean yeah. like he just and that to me is like my new label will hate this but th- that's what I want. That's what I like to hear about rap music. You know what I mean? Something that's so personal and singular. You know what I mean? Like the vision, not personal and as in like, but like, just like, it's such a singular thing that didn't have a million hands in the pot. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's just like, it's just like it was written and now it's on this. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really, you you look at rap records today and like look at the liner notes and there's like 67 writers, 135 producers, 75 samples used. It's just like I think like yeah, that's sorely misunderstanding what like the essence of rap is, which is just an MC and a break be- and a and a DJ with a breakbeat playing. You know what I mean? To this day, I think the best joints sound like that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's almost I'll like I'll get off my uh, soap soapbox, but No, I hear you, man. <laughs> I feel like it's almost like like rap and punk music are similar in that way where it's like it's that raw energy a lot of the time that like has the biggest punch and like has the biggest impact and it's like there's something about hearing like a really raw like punk recording where you where you can feel the DIY spirit in it like verse like I also lo- really love pop punk, but often that shit is like very produced and polished and it doesn't like maintain that same spirit. And I should say like, well, yeah, I'm the same way. Like I let, you know, Chronic 2001 is like, is like an album that's like always stuck with me and that shit is super dialed in yeah. and polished. But so you're right. But like, I guess for, from what, from what I do, for what I'm best at, it works more in the other way than that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, I gotta say, for some reason, I was inspired to to listen to the Chronic two thousand one the other day, and um, I was really disappointed with. Uh, I guess I'm just like, as I get older, realizing that like how my least favorite parts of those records is when Dre is rapping. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> also, like, I used to love that record, Milk. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think I like it because of like I think I have like rose tinted. But, uh, uh, like, yeah, Dre's rapping is terrible. Also, sometimes, like, skits back then are just, like, out of control. Like, <laughs> the yeah. having sex skits, yeah. like, man, that's one thing the streaming era has, is works in the favor. <laughs> there's there's, there's no, no more <laughs> weird sex skits in a rap record to try to listen to. All you those know, you're listening ones. to, like, Big Pun, and all of a sudden you hear, like, a a train getting ran by fat Joe and big pun on your fucking <laughs> in between track eight and track nine. And you're like, gee, I did not need this. Like at the moment and I have a visual of some big, gorgeous uh, men going at it. But absolutely. anyway, yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I feel you crying 2001. I haven't listened to it in a very long time. I just hear that one song all the time. Still Dre. The ling, ling, Oh ling. yeah. I mean, yeah, that shit still like hits yeah. for me, but I was like it, hearing that song the other day, like made me want to listen to that record. And okay. I just found myself skipping a yeah. lot and just like really paying attention to Dre's raps and realizing that they're not great. No. And uh that they're the moments I appreciate the least on yeah. the record. And it's mostly but then I have to give it up for his beat making, obviously, you know? Yeah. A lot of that shit is like very iconic to me still. But yeah. Just uh um, nah, sometimes you 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 revisit those records that had such a big impact and then they just like 
don't hold the same weight, and it's, that, it, sometimes it, it's disappointing. It's true. Also, like, 1999 is, I think, when that came out. And, like, I think, like, the palette of music was just really bad on a mainstream level during that time. It's an interesting time I think in it's music. like I think it's, like, really... People are really confused <laughs> about like where to, <laughs> where to take it next. Not maybe Dre, but just the zeitgeist of music was bad. You know, yeah. I don't need to bring up ninety nine Woodstock or anything, <laughs> but but like yeah, I just think it was like yeah. Um, talk to me about like wh- how you feel like you're Portland born and raised. Yeah. How do you feel like this city? I was born right up on Greeley. Okay. Where the Adidas thing used to be a hospital. How do you feel like this growing up here um, has informed your style as a rapper and as an artist? Well, yeah, like, I mean, if you listen to me, I'm talking about Port, like, I'm very Portland-centric. I can't not be. I mean, like, it's just, like, if I'm talking about what's going on, I have to be, I'm here. This is what's happening. Like, um, I take, I take tremendous pride I think for some weird reason, just stupid rep your city shit, Portland rap, rap it, rap. You're always supposed to like rep where you're from hard. I think I took that. I think I was born in a neighborhood at a time that was interesting. There was, there was a lot going on and, um, and like, yeah, like it, I don't. I, I talk. I reference something about Portland. Every like, I'm about to go to New York to go record. I, I'm gonna be saying the most Portland centric bullshit <laughs> that only people from Portland, maybe in a certain time or place, will understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that shit is just for forever. Like in me, like I'm. I am of Portland. Like, like. And not only I'm from Portland, like, I'm, like, I was, but, like, I could go to the top of my roof and see the Moda Center (laughs) type of Portland, you know what I mean? Like, I'm in this, like, very inner city, central Portland, you know what I'm saying? So it's, like, where I grew up. And, like, um, you know, like, yeah, like, all, like, you know. As everybody says in Portland, after the nine, like after the eighties and nineties, there's a bunch of gentrification, and that shit's weak. But like, I still take tremendous pride about like where I grew up, and and uh, yeah, it'll always be in my rhymes. Like all that will forever. Portland will always be like I hate Portland, but I love Portland, <laughs> and like like you know I always talk about leaving, but I never leave. Like. Uh, my family's here like everybody's here you know what i'm saying so it's just like and you know I, people people are always on my line like oh you got to get out of portland like oop de whoop you know and it's like yeah but like i don't really want to have to go to like new york or la like to live there to do this you know what i'm saying like what's the point of that like my i want to be here the whole like yeah <laughs> i can go on a plane and go go somewhere yeah but like i'm never gonna this will always be like home base like no matter what yeah i just think that we're i mean i think there's there's definitely benefits to maybe being in bigger markets like day to day and maybe the the interactions that you get to have with people but i just think that we're also like maybe beyond the point of needing to be in a city 100 percent to advance your career as an artist you know yeah. with the with the internet with the and internet and like being able to you can go spend a week in new york if you want to go spend a week in new york but yeah I, I i have uh claimed this to be my home for the last 11 years so like i i have a lot of pride and go hard for this city so i think like i uh, like i get that additional like love for your lyrics when i get to hear things about the hot cake house and like all these little spots but yeah. i also think that that um those are like some of my favorite aspects of music across the board lyrically like whatever genre it is when people point out little corner stores and things yeah. that i have no reference for so like i feel like in your delivery it's got a 
maybe maybe they don't have the, like the pinpoint reference for these places that they haven't been if they don't live in this city. Yeah. But it feels good still. Yeah. And yeah, I think no it like doubt. paints a pit like I think that you do like a really good job of of painting a picture, you Thank know, like you. Yeah, through I the try lyrics. To, definitely. So I always appreciate that listening and then yeah, getting the extra love for like understanding like these reference points. I gotta say something. I was just read an article about somebody talking about Elliot Smith, uh, talking about in one of his songs walking around Alameda. And this motherfucker thought he was talking about Los Angeles. Uh. And I wanted to fucking break some shit. I was like, you bitch, he's talking I was so fucking mad. <laughs> I was fucking livid. I like I was like about I was ready to call people. I was like ready to like the article was so long ago, but I wanted to email somebody that worked there and be like, you know, this is a <laughs> anyway. Sorry, that's amazing. Dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I think like one of the things that I appreciate about like maybe rap is an art form, like rappers working with different producers and and jumping around is that it's almost like you're playing with a different band every time when you're making a record. Um. Yeah, what do you feel like maybe different producers bring out of you that that others don't and like the importance of like switching it up from different records with different producers? Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, it's more fun because it's like, yeah, like if you're working in the same palette every time, it won't. I mean that's tight too. I mean it's all, but I think it's just you know new energy, new new sounds, new new way, new ideas can come across because of new sounds. Like you know maybe like me and Calvi's record Tiger Milk, uh, that's a little more goofy and fun. You know what I'm saying? Maybe another producer. I don't want to say goofy. That was that was rough, but yeah, sure, goofy. I don't care. Fuck it. Yeah, it's a little goofy. It's a little fun. It's a little more like of a good time less serious we're not talking we're not trying to drag anybody down but maybe on another record i get real depressing <laughs> maybe another producer gives me shit where i could be like okay now let me be sad for yeah. a second <laughs> is that do you think that's just the beat itself like speaking to you in that that yeah, sort of way yeah i always like i kind of i always like take what the beat gives me you know what i mean like i'm very uh what the fuck is that thing where you get the senses tied up Oh, the uh, is it? The, it's not the synesthesia. Is it? That's is, like seeing, hearing things or seeing so things like, in color. I, yeah, or, but whatever that shit is, yeah. where I hear sound or see sa see sounds or whatever that yeah. type of shit is, I have that like very viscerally. So like with beats, like like if like I just like I really like yeah like if I just close my eyes. Look, <laughs> I don't think I actually close my eyes. <laughs> Maybe I do, but uh, for but the like, dramatization, <laughs> Milk closes yeah, his yeah. eyes. He, he yeah, sees a color, and I see Disneyland. <laughs> nah, but like, but like, yeah, like I just like, yeah, like the beat really like gives me the vibe. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I can get a whole vibe from a beat. Like, I'll start thinking about places that I've been and things that I've, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, definitely. Um, there's been quite a bit of work done with televangel yeah. of late what about that relationship works so well for you well he lives in portland <laughs> and he's easily accessible okay uh we definitely he's really dope because he'll just like have a beat that's like he's working on i'll rap to it and then he just like does all this crazy shit to the beat after I'm done rapping to it. You know what I mean? Like adds all these layers and textures that sound really cool. Does it often like almost sound like a demo then? When, oh, yeah. Like what you were talking about? Like is that kind of what you get when you're recording your raps on things and then it like turns into something yeah, a like, little different when you're done? Yeah, yeah. Like with him, like the beats are like complete. But also I just trust him to make dope shit all the time. So I just don't care. I'm like, whatever, like whatever he'll do, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to fuck with. So it's like not a big, it's not, I'm not tripping. And like also with me, I should say I never listen to my demos. I don't even get them emailed to me. I like rarely ask for him to get emailed to me. I, I don't listen to it. But, uh, but like, yeah, he, he, 
it's always something different and it sounds crazy. I also just love how how he mixes me. It pisses some people off, but I love how like in the mix I am, like in the music. I'm not yeah. like so high above compressed on top of the beat. No, like you're I'm right in it. I'm right there in it. And I think for a rapper like me, a lot of rappers that like rap like me always want their shit like a radio freestyle sounding, you know what I mean? Where they're just screaming on top of the fucking <laughs> beat. So it's very cool to work with him so I can I, I can like how I say I'm more of a writer than a musician, this makes me think more musically when I work with him. Like a, like I I just I just like how it's how it all is. And so we got that all down and it's just it's just super comfortable and easy to record with him and Yeah, it's just fun. I lo- I love recording with him. We got the beer fridge. It's all I need. <laughs> is it uh is it difficult for you or more difficult for you to uh record something if you're not actually in the room with the producer? Like say you're like doing something a little more remotely, like I know that a lot of this sparked for you getting back into music like during the pandemic. So you must have been like, yeah, I had to just do, send in, sending raps over email and things yeah, like that. And that, and I hated that, but that's what had to happen. It's hard. It's harder to work. Yeah. It's harder for me. I need the, I like really would rather be, have the producer be there just because everybody's going to be on the same page right away. There doesn't need to be communication, like yeah. a ton of emails back and forth and shit like that you, know you don't have saying? to like throw your raps down and then someone and, like, be like i'm not really tr- feeling me, that yeah me and my homie trucks have been trying to make this record since 2020 well probably 2021 and we just can't do it because we're not in the same place you know I, yeah. I know once we get into the same place like we'll knock it out yeah. in like no time but like the, it's just a big it's just yes i need i would way 100 percent rather have the producer there again with that being said i'm about to record a project but that's not gonna happen at all so. well i'm sure that's good too <laughs> yeah. like for you to like have that experience and like have to work under those conditions yeah. as well just to like to show that you can operate in that way if not for yeah. like other people but for yourself yeah but yeah definitely like in the pandemic like yeah i started like kind of almost like right when the pandemic started i started doing music again and like uh yeah, it was it was weird, like, but it was also kind of fun. I had a ton of fun. Those are all those projects. Almost all of them are no longer on streaming or anything. But <laughs> but uh, you've been known to take some things down. Well, no, actually, it was an accident. But my first four, I did like four little EPs in twenty twenty. Okay, and they were on some distro kit account that I cannot get into. So I haven't been able to repay it to get it, to keep them on to the, to the thing, keep them on the streaming services because I didn't pay whatever. Okay. But, uh, distro kid sponsors the show milk. I don't know if you know that, but I'll, I'll, uh, oh, I'll get at them. Distro kid. Distro we need to kid. figure this shit out. But, get my guy uh, milks <laughs> other records up but, on his streaming. But, um, I think I'm going to do something with all those. Well, I, it also should be said those poor projects. The only people that listen to them are like 20 of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> like literally <laughs> that's amazing but shout out to the homies and yeah. like shout out to everybody that gave me beats when like nobody listened to me like that was very nice of everybody shout out ton uh uh stewart or er, solomon uh blank 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 bryce lang uh laws spoken all you fools thank you for giving me beats when i was a nobody <laughs> uh I love y'all forever for that. And uh, I'm going to figure it out. I, I want to do like a culmination of those or okay. something. Like Just pick your favorites. Yeah, like put them on a vinyl. I want it to be like a bigger thing than when it was when it released. Because it's kind of unfair to them because it's like they deserve some of this new little bit of tiny bit of thing I got going on now. Like, like I have more listeners now, more yeah. people watching me now. I just feel like I need to get them... Those, those eyes too you know what i'm saying like it's like, called that compilation distro yeah, kid yeah yeah but i'll figure <laughs> it i'll figure it out but, um yeah curious to like how important you think that gap was of you not making music to maybe contributing to your your level of output 
these last few years? Yeah. I mean, yeah, so I stopped making music probably 2015 to 2020. Like, I would go sometimes and do some, like, random shit, but, like, it wasn't, there was no, like, project or no real anything. I was just kind of being a baby because I, I put, a, like, because just nothing happened with my group. <laughs> like, I was just kind of just being like, oh, fuck music, you know, like, I, you know, just being a, 24 year old idiot and then uh thinking that i was the greatest and nobody was paying attention and yeah. that annoying ass shit that nobody gives a fuck about uh yeah no i should say this nobody gives a shit like to to any fellow younger musician or rapper out there nobody's supposed to care or like your music so be thankful every time that it it's happens. a bad reason to do it yeah and va- you gotta have inner validation like you gotta, you gotta have it in you. Like you, you can't. You gotta the the idea of just making the music has to be the best thing. Yeah. Or else it's like, yeah, what the fuck are we doing? So, but uh, yeah. So I was just mad at the world. I hated the Portland scene. I, I was just an angry Ute, as they say. <laughs> and I, uh, I needed those years for sure because, you know. I did a lot of growing up in those years too. Like a lot of shit had happened, a lot of craziness, a lot of, you know, I worked my first and only one real job during that time. I, uh, I, uh, yeah, you know, went through relationships, went through, you know, lost people, you know, all types of shit, you know what I mean? And it, it kind of, and and I was still rap like I still have rhymes from that time in my head that I haven't recorded yet. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like like I have a back. Uh, that's why I was able to just go crazy. Like I had an extreme. I had a back catalog of a half of a decade. Like that. Like I didn't really do anything with or put anything out. And like I, I. Uh, it was like a formative time in my life too. Like it was tons of shit was going on and like, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I think like before I was making music, my frontal lobe hadn't even (laughs) (laughs) developed all the way, you know what I'm saying? And the way I write and the way I make music, I think is like kind of similar to like a comedian where I don't think comedians really get good till they get like 35, 40 years old. Mm Cause they had to have gone through life and had experiences to talk about. Right. right. Like I was saying earlier and the way I am, I'm kind of similar to that. Like I'm not, I'm not here to like give you like a crazy melody or anything like that. Or like, a, you know, I, I, what I'm saying has to be what you're interested in. If you're listening to my music, it has to be like the words that I'm saying and the thoughts and ideas and everything. And like, I just, you know, Another thing is, is like I was when I was younger, I was just like following shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like I was as you do as a younger person. Like I was just trying to sound like, oh, let me make a record that sounds like this record. And we did a pretty good job at like copying other people's records. (laughs) Like we were able to do it pretty good. But like I didn't develop what I am like, like I've definitely like developed what I am now. I needed those years to, like, get my own shit where I'm yeah. not, like, just fucking, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, like my own voice type shit, yeah. Yeah, for sure. You put on a milk record now and you know it's, yeah, yeah, you know exactly. it's your authentic yeah. voice. You've had the time to to carve it out. And I think that's uh, <clears throat> that's the nice thing, like, bouncing around your, your discography these last few years is that, like, whether it's different producers, it's um, it feels like your it's like my your Maloo. vision and your voice. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it doesn't feel like you're. When I listen to these records, it doesn't feel like to me that you're you're trying to copy someone. And and yeah. I think that is so much of like the the learning process as like a younger artist or like early on is that you're you're mimicking these people that have inspired you. Yeah. to a degree where it can feel like you're just like ripping it off or like yeah. You know, thinking about even early podcast conversations for me, you know, it was all heavily inspired by the people that hosted these types of conversations. And then it slowly becomes your own voice as yeah. you get your reps in on it. Exactly. And you just get comfortable and you're just more yourself. The older you get, kind of you just get 
you're just more yourself. Like yeah. you're less worried about other shit. You just know what you like. You like what you like, and you just do it. But but hip hop has such like a like a youth fascination. Well, at least it used to. I think we're kind of getting away from that a little bit. But it used to just be like like the fact that I have any like people in the industry hitting me up now just cracks me up because I'm like I'm like damn I'm like old as fuck like <laughs> like where were y'all when I was like 23 like. But it all happens how it's supposed to happen, as they say, or whatever, you know, so. Yeah. When you were, when you mentioned that uh, have to, having to have that, like, self-validation, is, was, can you think to, like, any pivotal moments for you or, like, when it, like, kicked in for you having that self-validation instead of chasing it maybe in other places? I think I'm still working on it for sure. <laughs> I still, you know, I still... It's like always a work in progress, but I think, you know, I think during the, I think during the pandemic things got so quiet, you know, you're able to think a little bit for, like if you weren't worried about the world falling apart the mm-hmm. other five mm-hmm. seconds, you yeah. know, the other little bit of time you can kind of think about reflect time of like reflection and what you could probably work on to like, I remember my mom telling me very early in the pandemic being like, this is a good time to like get yourself to a place you want to be or, or get yourself at least in a, the direction of where you want to be while things are stopping. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's kind of like, you know, we got the clock to s- sit still. You know what I yeah. mean? Like we got time to like do stuff and think stuff and re- and realize stuff about uh yeah about what you want to do and who you want to be and how you want to do it and wait what the fuck was the question i'm sorry uh just you know you you spoke about that that gaining your own self-validation yeah yeah, self-validation and i think yeah yeah and i think i really had to realize like okay like i had it in me i always want to make music Why, why do i want to make music and and I really, it, it's all for my, like, it's got to come from me. It's like, it's got to be a self-fulfilling thing. Like, it's got to be, it can't, all the outside shit is just outside shit. First and foremost, I need, I want to make music because I fucking have to make music or I won't be okay. I should say, this five-year period of time that I wasn't making music was very fucking dark for me. It was a little me. reckless, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it was fucked up. I was not in a good place. Like, anybody could see that. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, I have to do this shit. Now, like, like, I don't, bro, I used to have, like, crazy fucked up like vivid ass nightmares during that five year time and then when i started making music again them shits has completely gone out the window like I'm, i have like i have like less anxiety i'm less like all this shit and 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 i think i just gotta remind myself that like dude you have to do this shit <laughs> like 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 it's it's like the only way you can respond to the world and feel okay yeah. <laughs> like get you know what help fucking I used to fucking hate waking up every day. Now I'm like excited. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah and like, and I'm, le- and I'm fucking lucky as hell. Like the people, whatever, small or big people are paying attention to what I'm doing. You know what I mean? And that's so, I'm old enough to know how that does not happen to people. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I, people, I am getting outside validation now. And it's like, it's like, I'm thankful for that shit because I know how, that does not come often. Like people make tons of music and don't hear anything ever. You know what I'm saying? And really good people too. I know people that are amazing at what they do, but just haven't whatever, for whatever reason it hasn't, you know, we all know people, but like, yeah, it's, uh, I'm still working on like being completely like (laughs) Zen about it. I don't think I'll ever get there. It's a constant battle. Yeah, but like I try to always remind myself to like, man, you'd be doing this if nobody was looking and you have done it when nobody was looking and you know you feel better (laughs) even if nobody's looking and you're doing it. Uh, So, so, So it's like, you know, it and you know, it does feel good, you know, to like, you know, 
see fan fan or like I don't like saying fan, but people that fuck with supporters that fuck with your music and shit like that, and like people like commenting, commenting and DMing you and labels and managers and blue 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 hitting you up. That shit does feel good, but yeah. nothing is as feels as good as me just like having an ill day, fucked up day, and then writing a rap and feeling better. That's the bet. That's the shit you know what i mean like yeah man you gotta feel like that that is that's the best shit you know what i mean like all that other shit is just icy on the cake but like that is like that's what matters most you know for me you know yeah yeah i think that's like when it's special too when you yeah. recognize that like you you'd be doing this even if no one was listening and like when you recognize like what a positive impact it has on like your day to day life. You yeah. Know? Do you have any idea like what you feel like, gr like why it grounds you in that way or, or just like the ability to get things off your chest, I guess, like in freeing yourself of those nightmares yeah, and yeah. things like that. I think, yeah, I think it's part of it. Like, I mean, a lot of my raps, like are deceptively pretty dark. Like sometimes I'll say some super foul shit. I, I think because I say so many, it's so like deadpan sometimes. I think it goes over people, not over people's heads, but they're not really like thinking about the line I just said. Like they're more maybe thinking about how it sounds, yeah. or what it's rhyming with. But yeah, man, like getting that ill, like getting that foul shit off of you, I think is a thing. Like, like getting, you know, for me, it's just like punching a boxing bag sometimes. Like, even if I'm not saying particularly dark shit, but I'm just like rhyming really hard, like mm -hmm. going hard or whatever, barring out, like that shit is like hitting the, the speed bag or like the, the heavy bag for me. Like, I'm getting like aggression out and like pain out and hurt out on this beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, not to be so melodramatic about the shit, but, but it's, but it's true. And I think that that's just part of it, you know? Like, I think, uh, I think it does, it just ground, it just, yeah, it just really does ground. It makes me a better listener, a better, like, I, I listen to people more because of that. Like, I'm able to have a little more clear head after I write, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, it's just, it, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, like, writing, I think, definitely makes me a better person, for sure, without question yeah yeah do you uh do you feel like you notice even more now that you're like deep into this process and like you're putting stuff out regularly like if you go a few days or like go a week without like doing much creating that you can like feel it kind of creeping back the other way yeah i really do i mean even even the uh, i mean luckily i'm at a place now where like uh things are like thing things are happening music wise where the you know there's some opportunities financially and shit like that where i can get a little bit of money you know what i'm saying but like you know when you have to do other you know everybody's got to like figure out how to figure it out you know what i'm saying yeah. so like that takes a lot of time out of your out of your other shit you know out of your creative time and it's like the the whole goal of me doing the a bit not the whole goal a big a big part of me doing this is like trying to make this shit my day job, which is in itself an insane and like crazy. Like, <laughs> like I realize how irrational and insane that sounds to some people, but it's like, but yeah, like that's the reason why I want to make this my day job. Is so like it can, you know, it's, it's the only thing I have to worry about. Yeah. And like, um, yeah yeah oh that makes sense it's uh it seems like you're in a good place with it then yeah you know and like i said i I was just yeah you caught me on a good week we could have had this thing we could have done this podcast a couple of weeks ago that's another thing about this shit i'm it's still bipolar with the career thing <laughs> about it all like, <laughs> what do you do you, do you just mean like your your self-worth with it like where the career is at or like the ways that you're maybe gauging success at this point yeah i think 
Well, we, I mean, anybody that goes into this shit is a little delusional. You kind of got to be. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, just like where my mind is at at the time. It, it can be totally a self thing, you know, where I like have talked myself out of it or like. But, you know, when things are looking up with the music shit, I just. I gotta say, I get it. It 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 it, it feels good. Yeah. <laughs> like when you get good news, your phone, you know, your phone is. People are hitting you up every day about stuff, and you and you have stuff to do, and you got a little bit of money in your pocket from doing it. Like, yeah, <laughs> things are, things are sm- My life feels definitely smoother. Yeah, <laughs> but for like, sure, man. But then you like have something happens or whatever, and you have like a bad week. It, with this shit, you can feel an inch away or a mile away. Absolutely. So it's like, it, it, you know, um, yeah, it's very, it's very, it's still a very up and down thing with me about the career aspect of it. The creative aspect of it, I've, you know, I always feel good about it. You know, honestly, I really do. Like, I love recording, writing. I love thinking of new things. You know what I'm saying? So, but the other aspect, you know, like the, the, ambition and all that bullshit is like yeah that can be very up or down for me some days yeah i mean it feels like uh i don't know just seeing your output it seems like it's happened because you love this shit and yeah it's in you yeah and you want to get it out and not like this thing where you feel like oh i have to put another record out to to follow up this this is like no nah, this is just like yeah where i'm at with it just putting a lot of stuff out and and it like I think having that good news from time to time is really important to like keeping you going, even if, yeah. you know, like you, you were talking about the self validation is obviously a very important aspect of it as well. But every once in a while you need, you need a win to, to keep you going and to, to outweigh some of the losses and like, you don't get, you know, yeah, I, it's, it seems to me like you're, you're working pretty hard for it, man. Yeah. You know, yeah, I definitely am, man. I, I, and you know, that might even sound bad to some people, but it's, but it's true. I am. I'm working very hard. <laughs> but like, that's a big aspect of it. Yeah, man. I think that that's like, you know, you got to work hard at this to like make it sustainable in some way for yeah, yourself. I think so too. I think that's what separates a lot of people. It's like how how hard they're willing to work and just like it's not working hard to me because this shit is so easy. I mean, this not. E- I mean, it's just so like. Like there's just nothing else I should be doing. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Other than this, but like, yeah. I mean, my bro, I have a homie who's like in another field, but like kind of started during pandemic as well, and just like watching him, like kind of maneuver through what he's maneuvering through, and me through mine. It's just kind of funny how, how. uh how that all can work but yeah like just being in any creative field and trying to trying to get a dollar out of it is just such a funny it's just quite a ride yeah for (laughs) sure and whether this shit comes easy to you or not as far as like the writing and whatnot it's still you're still carving out the time to create and get get in the studio and and, you know putting in the work in that way yeah and then lately you know everybody's been making me do these visuals like i hate that shit but i go and do it because it's that's how the music industry works now <laughs> it's like what we we're talking about yeah you know, me, me going to filming these podcasts and yeah, shit too. yeah it's like people want to see your dumb face yeah. talking they want to see your <laughs> lyrics at the bottom of the screen yeah that's, which is what i really that takes away so much of the reason why i mean I don't know how I feel about this whole thing, but it, but anyway, yeah, like uh, it, it's just crazy, like trying to like keep yourself being you and what you would want to do and and want to do, but I, and the other half of you, you know, wants to like move forward, <laughs> and it's like I'm constantly doing this like check in, like is this like something you want to do like is this okay for you like yeah. but but then the other half of me is like but we got we want like we want this to work for us at some point like maybe we should like compromise not compromise but do something different this time to see how it works type shit you know what i mean like 
But, uh, but you know, also, like, I should say, like, I make the most dusty, underground-ass rap music I think in the world. So, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not out here trying to proclaim, I'm trying to be Drake or anything. I, I, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, blue collar it, you know? <laughs> well, I think you're doing a, a fine job of it, Milk. Thank you. I, thank you. I appreciate your music very much. Thank you. And uh, like I said, just impressive how much you've put out. And uh, I'll definitely make sure the the links are in the episode notes so people can keep up with you. Dope. Uh, get yourself a milk vinyl. There's a there's a couple of those that have come out. Yeah, they're all gone. Are they all gone? Yeah, there's. An, I tried to get one the other day and couldn't get my hands on. All right. One. Well, <laughs> even I missed the boat on that. But I'll be. I'll be looking for the represses of yeah. uh, the Neutral Milk Motel and yeah, the, the fish do, that saved Portland. We got to do another <laughs> run. We got to do another run soon. But yeah, um, I want to play the episode out with your your most recent track, which is uh, just one more time, which I yeah. know is a, a pretty personal one about a friend who who just passed. Yeah. Um, can you talk to me about that that track or whatever you're comfortable with sharing, oh, and, yeah, and just yeah. the way maybe um, how helpful that's been to kind of process that? I know it's very fresh, yeah. Uh, wounds and but just like how yeah, yeah. how no, that's been. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, it's about my homie uh, Mighty Misk, who also was in the Portland rap scene. Like I said, he was in a group with Harry Matt called State of Mind, and then he. Did a bunch of solo stuff, and uh, he passed recently a couple, few weeks, three weeks ago. Three weeks ago from today. Uh, yeah, and like, uh, <laughs> like I was kind of been talking about all episode. Like, I just needed to get it off me type. Like, I needed, I got the beat from Televangel. I wrote to it like two days after he passed, and I recorded it after going to his funeral. Um very drunk i drank a pint of hennessy alex gave me some a pint of hennessy <laughs> shout out my boy uh dusty fox uh he had some sips too and i can't say i killed the whole thing <laughs> uh, uh yeah and you know mighty misc with uh misc alan eichler a uh, big part of you know what I what I did and who who I uh, big part of me rapping, um, but even more than that, he was just you know I known him my whole life, like grew up around me, um, yeah, just a just a big loss, you know, you know you, when you, you when you lose people young, it's just it's just ugly, like yeah, it's 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 never. You know, going to an older person's funeral, like you know, it's sad, but it's like you know, that's life. But when somebody's when when it's cut short, it's just a, it's just a certain ugliness to it all, you know. And, Absolutely. But I also just to say this, like I want to say this, uh, mental health is just like any th- any other sickness, man. Like, like I I think we have a real fucked up way of looking at certain things in our society about that. As far like if somebody dies of cancer, to me it's the same thing. Somebody's dying of mental health, like it's like you know they're in tremendous amounts of pain, um, and uh, yeah, it's like uh, I think we gotta kind of readjust sometimes about how we look at things. Like you know, hearing hearing people say like, "Oh, I'm so mad at this person," I, I just I, I have a hard time with that personally. But uh, absolutely. Um. Anyway, shout out to my bro Misk, rest in peace, baby. Uh, and um, yeah, man, I wrote I wrote this song. Uh, I hope it doesn't bum people out too much. But <laughs> I, I think it's beautiful, dude. Thank like you. I, Thank I you. never had the the pleasure of meeting along, but I like have seen this outpour from the community. I'm I'm very good friends with Dusty Fox, and yeah. and you know just to see my friends in pain losing a friend you know i know how yeah. that feels and i've i've gotten to know his dad dan yeah great guy just a a great dude and it has just uh just been there to you know support a lot of local music over oh, the yeah. years and i've known him for so long so when i heard about that i was just like immediately heartbroken not just for like my friends that have been impacted or but yeah. knew him but just for his his dad and his family and whatnot. Yeah. So I, I think it's uh this is a beautiful, 
tribute, man. This, Thank you, this man. track and also just uh, music is is beautiful in a way where you when you've been doing it for a long time and you kind of document your life maybe through this way is like you you get mentions of him like in blue faces you I know. know so like there's these, there's these things that. that like exist yeah. throughout your catalog of music and then to pay tribute this way is yeah. is a is a very cool thing man yeah thank you bro i really appreciate that and yeah rest in peace misc um yeah man i appreciate you i'm glad we got to do this you've been, yeah, you've been someone i've been wanting to have on the show for a long time and i'm i'm glad that we uh you got, a dope got ass, to do it today you got a dope ass space man i like this shit appreciate it it was fun it was easy it's a it's a pleasure to get to host uh people like yourself in this room and uh can't encourage people enough to go check out all the music that you've got up there once again i'll put the links in the episode notes so you can keep up with milk and everything he's got going on yeah. um we're gonna play it out with that just one more time track Wait. and uh milk we end every episode of the podcast with the guest saying the tagline for the show which is it's a program it means absolutely nothing it's just the way that my grandfather says the program. word program he says program is he from the kentucky no man he's just from like he's from california it makes no sense program. to me it seems to be just like this okay. generational thing okay but uh <laughs> it's the one time I'll, I'll ask i will ask you to uh look at the camera okay and you can deliver this it's a program however you would like to and we'll sail it out that way ladies and gentlemen it's a program he nailed it everybody that's milk check Hello. out the music playing it out with uh, just one more time that most recent single and that's the jelly jams and we will catch you on the flip side portland or wherever you are listening from cool man Hell yeah. All right, boy. i want to unload a clip in the sky but won't bring bro back shit i can't hold back wish i could go back and when you lit on 13 we was like 13 smoking on some dirt Addict trying to teach me how to count bars. You and Mac rocking shows, y'all felt like stars. Put me on one with Berlin up at Ethos. I threw up on Williams being kicked out. You let me live with you, guess you better judge me. Drinking, drugging, and thugging. Little fella, big heart. This one tough to make. Remember, you gave me 400 to go record my tape. Selfless, help others for you help yourself. When I was down, shit. Wish I could go back to that past over half sober. Life was crazy back then. We laugh over. Let me freestyle with miss just one more time. Let me hear one more self deprecating rhyme. Listening to these songs like going back in time. Pull my brew out for the mighty just one more time. Let me freestyle with miss just one more time. Let me hear.